So I was just reading the comments from today's video and I was totally triggered. So <laughs> these comments are coming in that triggers my greatest pet peeve. And what, what my greatest pet peeve in life is ignorant, lazy, retarded Christians. And the comment goes something like this. Well, I actually, there's a bumper sticker. There's a bumper sticker that sums it all up. I, you see it all the time. It goes like this. God said it. I believe it. That's all there is to it. So, uh, that, <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, the comment came up there. So the comment came up in the last video uh, it was this. It was, uh, well, uh, uh, the, the Bible says uh, this, so this is the way it is. Without any evidence, without any context, it's just a lazy, lazy, retarded answer. Um, evidence, context, you know, here, I'll give you an example. So, uh, we have a great many friends that uh, are really s strong believers that, uh, that a Christian should be a vegetarian. And uh, they'll always preface it. It's very, vegeta where vegetarianism almost, is, it becomes, not with all, but with some, almost becomes a doctrine in itself. A, almost a salvation issue. And the funny thing, and they know this, the funny thing about it is every time they will, will talk about vegetarianism, then they'll, say, they'll always preface it with, this is, this is not a faith, this is not a, a salvation issue, this is not a salvation issue. But you show up with, uh, with a, a roast ham at potluck, and um, I don't know you necessarily be handed your hat, uh, but you're not, you're, you're certainly going to be a second class citizen. So, um, <laughs> the point is, is, is this, is that just taking something, taking something and saying, well, uh, this is written, so that's all there is to it. Uh, I don't have to investigate. I don't have to understand the context. Uh, it just says, says it, and so that's what I do. That's what my pastor said. That's what my priest said, and, and so that's what I do it, and, and I'm safe. I don't, I don't have to have any input. I don't have to, to put any effort into this. I don't have to investigate. I don't have to question. Uh, God wants uh, robots. He wants uh, automatons. He wants uh, to keep us ignorant like like little children. Another perfect thing is, is, is Christ says, unless your faith is like, is that of a child, uh, you know, or, you know, uh, paraphrasing here. And so folks will say, well, I just need to be simple minded and, and I need to not question anything. And I just need to do what I'm told. That's just ridiculous. It, it, it's taking things out of context and it's not what it means. And so another thing that always comes up is you, you'll be around a crowd that thinks that, uh, well, Christians should never drink any alcohol and that, and that's a salvation issue. And, and uh, that, that should never, happen and uh, they'll 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 pick some they'll, they'll put together a whole bunch of texts and they'll, and they'll give them to me and the problem with that is, is that uh, I, I'm not uh, I'm not intellectually retarded I'm not a moron and I know what what the scripture says and I I have something to go back with them you know so okay so if we're gonna do that then you say this but I can go back and say and show you right here in the text that we should uh, that we're instructed by God to, to to sell our tithe and to buy strong drink and to rejoice before the Lord. So there, so you have your text, I have my text, and here is where all the theologies go. We go one direction, another place. That's why we have all these denominations, because of t cherry picking things that fit your particular think so or need or desire and building a faith or building a religion on that. So to address that, so yes, I can take sell your tithe and buy strong drink and rejoice before the Lord. So that means that I should not give anything to charity. I should not give anything to, to the church. I should not help my neighbor. I should go down and buy all of the expensive scotch that I want. And, and every weekend and every Sabbath, I should just get hammered. It's got nothing to do with it. It's about context, right? For that particular subject, you know, it, what he's talking about is if you can't make it to the feast, you can't make it because of one circumstance or another, you know what? Don't worry about it. Enjoy yourself. Uh, take what you have. Gather your family around. Do what you can where you're at with where, where, where you are with where you're at. So, yes, of course, if you look at the big picture and you take all 66 books as a whole, we can see and we can see through our own life experience that, yeah, we'd probably be better off if we didn't drink too much. Right? We could all agree with that. We would probably be better off if we didn't eat so much red meat um, and had more of a plant-based diet. Can we, or is there evidence for that? Yes, there's evidence for that. We can see vegetarians live you know, seven, eight, nine years longer than, than average folks. So it's not about 
grabbing something or and using it as a hammer to beat someone up it's it's what you know when you when you start to grow up and you start looking at the all 66 books and and what and you ask yourself when you're reading read it through with one question and say what's god trying to tell us here or what is this telling us about god and what you come away with and what you see is not someone that's waiting to squash you or to beat you down or to give you uh uh the palsy uh, for living an unclean life, you have a loving father that is trying to give you good life advice. Yes, it would be better uh, if you didn't drink too much. It would be better if you ate healthy. And, and these are some choices. And it would be better for you to eat this for this reason. It's no different than a loving parent uh, telling your child or teaching them, you know what, it'd be better if you didn't eat ice cream and cake for every meal. And the child thinks that he should eat ice cream and cake for every meal and that's what he wants and that's what makes him happy and he doesn't have the knowledge he's not grown up to know that he's going to lose his teeth he's probably going to suffer from diabetes and so a loving parent doesn't put the broccoli on the plate to punish the child he doesn't give them vegetables and fruits and and to try to abstain from too much sugar in these things because they want the child to be miserable they, they have more wisdom, they have more foresight, they have more life experience, they can see into the future. And so when we grow up a little bit, we realize that these things are not, be, these rules and the, these recommendations that we're reading in the Old and New Testament are not there uh, to try to make us miserable, but we have uh, an infinite or loving Father that is so much uh, wiser and has so much more experience and can foresee What is the outcome of these life choices that we make that he's giving us advice? Look, I I want you to be happy. I want you to to be healthy. I want you to, to, for for things to be as good as they can be while you're separated from me. So this is what I have given you. So anyone who starts telling you that you need to do this to, to be a person of faith, or you need to do that, or you need to eat these things, you know, tell them to go sit on their head. Uh, because it's not that simple. It depends, is the answer. It depends on circumstances. And remember, when you see someone, maybe they're, maybe they're, they're, they're smoking pot, maybe they're smoking cigarettes, maybe they're drinking more than, than you think that they should. Remember, they not, they're not on the same level that you are. You don't know that six months ago, they were shooting heroin. And, they, and, they, and, and God is leading them out of that, that, that now that they're, they're, they're coming out of that and you're seeing them a week, a month, or a, few, or a couple years later and they're making slow progressions where you have been maybe had every advantage of life and, and weren't raised in an abusive home with, with all manner of difficulties to o- overcome. They were given a wreck of a car to drive and you were given a brand new, the car of life analogy. So be careful. Uh, so because you have been sitting in the pews and you are the, the, the good Christian for 20, 30 years, uh, coming from every advantage, and someone comes in and, and is lighting up a cigarette in the parking lot, and you look down upon them because they are not, uh, they're not doing what you think they should be doing, you know, mind your own business. You don't know, you don't have no idea. That's why, I'll close with this, that's why the most important thing is when you go back to the last book, the book of Revelation. And when you, when the God's people meet him in the kingdom, he does something very interesting and very special. He gives everyone a white stone, and written on this stone is a new name, is your name, and it's there are no two alike. And this, no one knows what is written on this stone except for you and the Father. That's it. And what that signifies to me, it seems to me, is that that is a what. A, God may have a million, billion, trillion children, but what that signifies and what he's telling us is with that is that you and I, we have a unique relationship that's different from all these other people. And maybe you're looking at this person and you're thinking that they're very exalted and maybe they were a pastor or maybe they, they brought millions of people uh, to the gospel. Uh, you still get that same stone and you still, and you have, even though their relation, you don't know what their relationship is, but your relationship is unique and special it's one of a kind so it's an interesting set of things so be be careful i I got off from the original topic be careful with uh being lazy um and not putting any effort into it you get to read something when you come across something that's hard uh and, and you don't understand it you know for example when you read you're reading through the old testament and you see that we should we're directed to uh to the the to stone a child a rebellious and stubborn child Okay, so God said it, so I believe it. That's all there is to it. Are you going to take your stubborn and rebellious child out and you're going to stone him to death? 
Well, no. Well, why do you take other things uh, and say, well, God said it and I believe it and that's all there is to it and apply those to your life and put no effort into researching the context or the, what the circumstances are. So what are we talking about? I mean, how do we, how do we deal with that? How do we deal with, well, should we stone our child? And, and then Christ tells us on the other hand to, to turn the other cheek. And so people have one thing in one hand and, the, and so, and, and they don't want to put the work and the time in. And so they basically say that uh, it's full of hypocrisy. It's, uh, it doesn't apply to me and, and God can't be trusted because he says this over here and then he's changing his mind. He's doing a 180 and, and how can I serve a, a waffling God that, that does, can't decide what he wants to do? Context, context, context. What was going on in those times? What was needed? That was an emergency measure for people that were coming out of 400 years in bondage. It was God dealing with people at a particular situation, and that's what had to be done at the time. There were no prisons. There were no law enforcement. It was life or death, whether the small band of people were to survive and to, and to get through this wilderness wandering. Now, when you start to grow up and you don't need to be treated like a child and you can come become of one mind with God and you can start to agree, I'll, 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 God said it and, and I've investigated it and I agree that yes, I agree with you, God, that, that is a good idea. You're not giving me a arbitrary rule, an arbitrary commandment to keep me down or, or to oppress me, but you have given it to me uh, because you know that I will be healthier and happier and better off if I follow it. I'm sorry uh, that I was so stubborn when I was younger. Uh, now I'm finally grown up, growing up to the point uh, where I can uh, agree with you. So, um, yeah, take that bumper sticker off your car. Stop being a, a intellectually lazy and stupid and put some time in and investigate. Because if you know the word, then you can't be fooled by people who don't.